bring their intended victim into thinking that they are aimed at a different target. At the last moment, they change their course. Submarines have traditionally relied on torpedoes to attack surface warships. But now they can also fire anti-ship missiles from underwater. The main weapon to attack a surface ship is a torpedo. Increasingly now you're also seeing submarine launched missiles like the French Exocet, the American Harpoon. There are a variety of Russian missiles, uh, SSN-7, SSN-3 uh, to some extent, where the submarine can, can stand off at a greater distance and fire. Submarines can also fire specialized anti-submarine missiles like Sea Lance. Sea Lance is a rocket-propelled torpedo. It is launched like a missile and has the speed and range of a missile. But when near the target, it releases a torpedo into the water to seek out a hidden submarine. Anti-ship missiles can also be fired from a variety of launchers. The British Sea Skua, for example, is small enough to be carried by a small naval helicopter. The Franco-Italian Automat missile can be fired from a ship, but also from coastal defense launchers to protect harbors from enemy ships. The Soviet Navy is best known for its very large anti-ship missiles, which are nearly the size of a jet fighter. The massive tubes on the front of this Slava-class cruiser contain four SSN-12 sandbox anti-ship missiles. They are intended to attack large surface warships like aircraft carriers. Future generations of anti-ship missiles are likely to be supersonic making it far more difficult for a ship to evade them. An Aerospecial official describes such a missile, the new ANS. Its advantage resides essentially in the missile's capacity to avoid enemy defenses. It benefits from a high degree of stealth features, by an ability to defeat countermeasures, and finally, by supersonic speed. In fact, more than Mach 2. Mach 2 Naval missiles can also be used to attack land targets. The U.S. Navy's Tomahawk cruise missile uses a special guidance system called TURCOM to seek out land targets. The missile's computer contains a map of the target area and it compares the radar images of the terrain below it with the computer maps stored in its memory. This allows precise attacks against pinpoint targets miles inland. These targets can also be attacked with special submunition warheads which scatter a large number of small bomblets over a wide target area. Since the 1950s, the missile has gradually become the primary weapon in air-to-air -air combat. Undoubtedly, the most successful dogfighting missile in history has been the AIM-9 Sidewinder. The Sidewinder has an infrared seeker that homes in on the hot exhaust gas of an opponent's jet engine. The AIM-9 is tailored for close-range combat. In the dogfight mode, they designed the AIM-9 missile, which gives it a, a quicker launch, a uh, faster acceleration. It's a much quicker missile to get to the threat. Therefore, in a shorter range dogfight arena, you want to have that missile, which has uh, the capability to get to them as fast as possible and uh, kill the adversary quicker. The capability of the Sidewinder has improved through time due to its new and more sensitive heat-seeking guidance. With early sidewinders, the pilot had to maneuver onto the tail of an opponent, where the hot exhaust gas of the engine was most obvious. New versions of the sidewinder, like the AIM-9M, are so sensitive that they can lock onto the heat generated along the forward edge of a fighter by air friction. The early version of the sidewinder was basically a uh, stern aspect where you had to shoot from dead six at the target, almost straight and level. We've evolved now into the later types, later generations of missiles, the AIM-9 LM, and so on and so forth, that have a very good maneuvering capability. They have very good infrared discrimination. 
You can shoot at much different angles, up to and sometimes including almost head on. Uh, if I were up against that kind of missile, I would sure handle my tactics a lot different than against an earlier generation AIM-9. Oh yeah, the advances in missiles have, have made a tremendous difference in air combat, no doubt. The other major method of missile guidance for dogfighting is radar guidance. The aircraft's radar illuminates the target and the missile homes in on reflections off the enemy aircraft. Radar signals travel much farther than infrared energy, so radar missiles can be used at much greater ranges than heat-seeking missiles like the Sidewinder. Often, fighters will carry heat-seeking missiles like the Sidewinder for close-range engagements, and radar-guided missiles like the AIM-7 Sparrow for long-range engagements. The F-15 carries uh, three types of weapons. We carry four radar missiles, the AIM-7. We also carry four heat missiles, the AIM-9, and we carry the gun. The uh, AIM-7 is a radar missile, as I talked about, and that's primarily employed in a beyond visual range uh, environment. We do not see the other airplane. We see them only on the radar normally, although you can shoot it in closer. But that's normally to get that first shot of opportunity. Once you've ID'd the target as hostile, take that first shot. Dogfighting missiles have been developed in Europe as well. The French Magique is an infrared guided missile and a direct counterpart of the Sidewinder. The radar guided Super 530 fulfills the same role as the Sparrow for long range air to air combat. The British Sky Flash is an improved version of the Sparrow. The most powerful air-to-air -air missile now in service is the U.S. Navy's Phoenix missile. The Phoenix has double the range of the Sparrow missile, over 125 miles. The sophisticated interface between the Phoenix and the F-14 Tomcat's powerful radar allows the Tomcat to engage up to six targets simultaneously. In the future, these features will be found in smaller missiles, like the new AMRAAM. Missiles also extend the power of aircraft when attacking ground targets. The AGM-65 Maverick is fitted with a special imaging infrared seeker that can lock onto ground targets with pinpoint precision. After the seeker is locked on, there is no need for further guidance corrections from the pilot, as there was in older generations of air-to-surface missiles. Attack aircraft are threatened by new advances in anti-aircraft missiles. To avoid these defenses, new missiles are being developed which can be pre-programmed to avoid enemy missile sites. A good example of this type is the new Matra Apache. The attack aircraft can fire the missile from outside the range of enemy anti-aircraft defenses. The missile flies itself to the target area. The Apache can attack different types of targets depending on its weapon load. Enemy airfields are a particularly important target and can be attacked using runway cratering munitions. Tank formations can be attacked using special submunitions. Missile-armed attack aircraft and combat helicopters pose an especially serious threat to ground forces. Not surprisingly, armies have turned to missiles to defend themselves against the air threat. 